welcome to today's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Your channel for super easy, no nonsense advice on how to declutter and organize your home. Please welcome your hosts, professional organizers, Ingrid Jansen and Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners to episode 66 of the Declutter Hub podcast. I'm Ingrid. And I'm Leslie. If you have clutter and want to sort it out, this is the show for you. So listeners, we wanted to wish you a very happy new year and welcome to 2020. Leslie, happy new year. Oh, thank you. Happy New Year to you as well. Although I, I have to confess we have spoken already, to be fair, in the decade, in the new decade. But yeah, it's a bit scary, a new decade. It makes you feel a bit old, doesn't it? It's that depressing to start the year. I'm like, oh, another decade. How many decades have I lived through? That's a lot. Because I was born at the end of the 60s. So I feel like I might be into my like seventh decade or something. That's really depressing, isn't it? But anyway, I'm not, I'm not even going to add it up. Yeah, I'm excited. Did you have a nice Christmas and New Year then? I did. I did. Do you like my headband, Leslie? I've got my Happy New Year headband on, specific, especially for you. Oh, thank you. you have, have you got a hat for every occasion? No, but I want to. <laughs> you see, that's exactly the kind of thing that would just go in the bin for me. I wore New Year's Eve, so I thought I'm going to keep hold on of the vibe of a new year, new decades. I thought, let me just do this for you. Thank you. I'm, I feel honoured. We are here to talk about not festivities. We're here to talk about a new decade and we're here to talk about, well, I don't want to call them New Year's resolutions, but we are going to be thinking about changing things, aren't we? And yes. I think that for a lot of people, particularly as people are listening to this podcast, they will tend to be people who do feel a little bit overwhelmed with clutter. So how is 2020 going to be different yeah, definitely. In today's episode, we will be talking about how can you just make sure that 2020 will be the year you will get clutter free and we just don't want your clutter to be another New Year's resolution that's going to fail before the year has even started. So that's what we're going to talk about, aren't we, Leslie? I think we should think of it more as a whole year resolution rather than a new year resolution. Cause I think that's the problem, isn't it? With new year's resolutions. We always think they're a little bit of a quick fix. Somehow we want to get it done, dusted and out of the way by the end of January or into February. And I think we really need to focus on decluttering for the whole year and then beyond really. I'm not saying you need to be decluttering 365 days a year because obviously there's other things that we want to do in our <laughs> lives apart from decluttering. But if you can get control of your house, what that should free up is time to do other things, isn't it? Yes. I think that's a point very well made, Leslie. I think with whatever New Year's resolution or however you want to call it, you've made for yourself, it can't be done in a week. You know, it's, I think you're right. I think it is a whole year resolution and not something that you can focus on for a week and then go, right, I focused on it. It's done. And I move on to the next thing. It requires a lot more than that, doesn't it? And we know this from experience. We do. And every, every, let's go back to the New Year's resolution, every resolution that we make is something that's going to take us out of our comfort zone and is going to require additional effort. And decluttering is definitely part of that as well. Why is it so hard for so many people? So for some people, we've talked about this many, many times. For some people, they're like, what's your problem? Why can you not declutter your house? It's easy. It's not rocket science. But then for the rest of us, it is rocket science and it is hard and it is something that we really need to battle against to make happen. So for some people, it's fine in the same way that people don't have a problem with the weight. They're absolutely fine. They can eat what they want. They can do what they want and they're still thin. That's absolutely fine. People are different. And there are some things that some people excel at and there are some things that people find more difficult. And so for obviously a lot of our listeners, decluttering is something that they do find difficult. So we're here to try and help. So why is it typically so difficult to declutter? I think because maybe a lot of people have not been taught how to declutter, that they just don't know how to do it. Yeah, definitely. I think that goes back to, you know, we see it all the time, don't we, with are people who live in reasonably cluttered houses who are like, but I've told my son to go and clean his bedroom, but he's just not doing it. Well, that's because A, he's not seeing it happen every day and B, you've not broken it down into manageable chunks for him. So to say to a child who's got a hugely untidy bedroom, go and tidy your room. It's a big 
mammoth task, isn't it? We need to break it down. Go and tidy that bedside table. Go and take all the things off your floor. Go make your bed. Go make sure that you've brought all the cups and plates and things down. So we need to, we can't just say clean your room. So to a child to say clean your room is like saying to us, go clean your house and declutter it. It's a big job, isn't it? It needs Mm -hmm. to be broken down. So I think sometimes it's about breaking things down into manageable chunks, isn't it? And so that that overwhelming task becomes more manageable and more sort of easy to work through. Yeah. And I also think why is it so overwhelming is because we are, we kind of maybe say to ourselves, okay, I am going to break it down in manageable tasks. I'm going to do the kitchen. But I'm like, that is still like a huge job. If you only, if you don't, you need to break that down even much, much further. So it does become manageable. And you probably have to maybe start making a list for yourself and go, okay, so what kind of task does that mean? Okay, I'm going to have to empty the dishwasher. I'm going to have to do the washing up. I'm going to have to look at my cutlery and I have to look at my plates and then my, my Tupperware and my herbs. And so you have to, the tasks I think that people try to do are so big that they lose track of what they were doing in the first place. I think that's also part of it, why it's so overwhelming. I think it's kind of building up to something, isn't it, as well? So I can't sit here and say, so we go out and work with people all the time. We're not doing things in 15-minute manageable chunks all the time. We Mm -hmm. are undertaking a big task, like a whole kitchen or a whole bedroom or a whole wardrobe or a garage or a loft. And so interspersed within your manageable chunks of things, there are going to need to be bigger days where you set aside a whole day to do something that can't really be broken down into manageable chunks, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to know as well. So we always talk about breaking it down, but I think it's almost to build yourself up, break it down into manageable chunks to get yourself to feel motivated, to move you on to the next task and the next task and the next task. And then at some point you're going to say, right, okay, I'm ready to tackle the kitchen. And actually I've already done my junk drawer. I've already done my spices so actually it's not as mammoth a task because I know that there are certain things that I've already covered, but actually there will be, you know, if you're doing a garage, you can't really do it to be fair in manageable chunks. You've just got to go for it. So there are things that are going to involve longer days, but don't start with that because that's where you get demotivated, isn't it? You've got to start with something easy and then you sort of build yourself up. Don't you all the time? You're like, Oh, that wasn't so difficult. Back in November, we did our uh, random acts of decluttering challenge, which was smaller, manageable chunks. Now, for some people, those manageable chunks were 10 minutes. So, so for some people, they could get their utensils draw done in 10 minutes. For other people, it was two hours. And so it, it very much depends on how much you've got, what the quantities are, what the volumes are, and things like that. So what a manageable chunk is to one person is very different to the next person. Clutter is very, very different to different people. And only you know what you've got to do to get over that. So I think that's part of the the problem. That's why it's so overwhelming because we view it as a whole house. I need to sort out my house. Too big, too big an undertaking. You need to break it down. You need to split it down and you need to work at it very, very gradually to get all of the different components in order, really. I think it's also, Leslie, when you look at like all the magazines and the articles now that are coming out with New Year's resolutions, it's all about, oh, just do 10 minutes. Oh, just, you know, and it's like, but it's not 10 minutes. (laughs) You know, let's, let's get that myth out of here now. It is not 10 minutes. You know, when even when you want to do a manageable chunk, you're probably going to have to spend maybe half an hour or 45 minutes or maybe even an hour sometimes to free up time. It's not 10 minutes here or there that that will get you from a very cluttered house to a house that is not so cluttered and you feel happy in. I think that's the thing. You know, that's where magazines kind of let us down a little bit, really. What the 10 minutes is, is is maintenance. That's maintenance, yeah, because we constantly need to be decluttering. So, you know, going back to the challenge again, when I did my utensils drawer, it was a 10-minute job, but that's because my utensils drawer is not that cluttered. It just needed to be taken out, cleaned, skim a few things off, off we go. And that's what you would expect from us. You would expect us not to have tons and tons of clutter. And I think also, to be, to be frank, a lot of people think that decluttering is short terms of time. 
while it's exactly what you're saying, the decluttering itself involves smaller and larger projects, but the maintenance, that's what needs to, that and uh, how to keep your house on track. Those are the 10, 15 minute jobs you can do. You know, it's the same thing with the washing up. If you do the washing up, daily it com- it's going to cost you 10 or 15 minutes if you save it up for a week you're there an hour and 15 minutes trying to scrape dried fruit off plates and it takes forever so i think that's i think a really important message that we want to bring across to our listeners is like you need to schedule time for this this is not a quick fix the same as losing weight is not a quick fix you start with let's look at one or two pounds not let's start with 10 kilos <laughs> Exactly. And and I think the other thing that comes into play a lot, you know, certainly with all our um, listeners, our members, anybody in our communities, people that we work with, any kind of change like that requires a huge amount of focus, positivity, positive mindset. And so many people have got things that happen in their lives, which take them away from that positive mindset, depression, anxiety, fibromyalgia, disabilities you know those are the the sort of difficult things that people have got to deal with and even if you're completely switched on and you want to do it sometimes things stand in the way and your positive mindset that you had when you woke up in the morning is gone and so you know we have to factor that in as well Mm -hmm. and so don't give yourself too big a task you know break it down and make it manageable say you know what I do really struggle. I struggle with my tiredness. I struggle at this time of the day. I'm going to do it. I'm going to just focus on doing one thing a week. And that's going to be my goal. You know, make these goals manageable within your current lifestyle. Yes, I think so true. I mean, of course, if you have a job part-time or full-time, if you've got several kids and you take care of a house, life is busy, you know, and, and, and the diaries get full. So it's about a conscious decision about you know what, I am going to schedule this in my diary. And yes, it's very tempting to meet my friend every day for a coffee or go out for a walk every day. But maybe I should just say one of those days, I'm not going to do that. I actually am going to go home and I am going to focus on my house and I am going to spend every Thursday morning between nine and 12 doing, you know, changing the beds and doing a lot of laundry and doing the washing up. And also I'm going to look at a decluttering task at that point. So you make it instead of, yeah, I'll do that another day. I'll get around to it someday. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I got time, nobody's got time. You, you make time. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. And the thing is you lose so much time through clutter And I think that's the massive benefit as soon as people start to think about, I am going to focus on my decluttering, how much time they win back. And that is just amazing to see that suddenly the time almost seems to appear. Wow, I don't spend every half an hour in the morning trying to find my keys, my purse, the shoes, the backpack from the kids and stuff that I need to bring into work or whatever. It's all there where it's supposed to be. So you start to claw back time in tremendous chunks. You know, you're absolutely right. There are so many pulls on time, aren't there? And, and I was having a chat with a client the other day and she was saying, I just have not got time. And I sort of said to her, you know, if you really want this to happen, you have to choose to spend that time. It's got to be a choice because we do, of course, we struggle. You know, you and I are busy people too, but we make our homes and keeping them orderly quite high on the list of priorities because we know that saves us time in the long run and it just makes for a more positive environment around us that works like clockwork and we have to do that to be able to do everything else don't we yes because we you know we are super busy people as well and and somebody said to me the other day oh my gosh how do you get everything done and it's because because my house is super organized and because we are are on top of things and we've got all this knowledge and that we just want to share with other people so they can reap the benefits of that as well. Definitely. So we talked about why it's difficult. I want this to be a positive podcast. Yeah, because Mm -hmm. it's all been a bit like, oh, it's so hard. It's so hard. And we know that. And it is overwhelming. And you've got to change your mindset around to focus time and energy and effort into decluttering if you want to free up that time and energy at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year. 
but it's very difficult. One, the one thing that we find all the time with our members, you know, people in our group, is it's retaining focus, isn't it? So how do you retain focus from the beginning of the task to the end? I think it's really important to be aware of the space and the flow you're in and not get sidetracked by something else. So you retain focus by being focused on the job at hand. And as soon as you find yourself drifting off to another room or in your head to another place, you need to kind of go, no, this is what I was doing. I was doing the clothes or I was looking at the books. I'm not looking at the toys. I'm looking at the books. Or I'm doing the kitchen utensils and I'm going to, or maybe even set an an alarm on your phone. 10 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes, I'm going to focus on this and then see, okay, the task is not completely done. I'm going to set my timer for another 10 minutes so I can then finish the job. And I think if you focus on one thing at a time, instead of running around back and forth, you will get much more done. And then you can kind of get that nice feeling for yourself, almost like, yes, a green tick. I've ticked it off my list. I've done it. I've completed it. Instead of, oh, I've walked off and done five other things, but the things I originally was doing is still not done. (laughs) Exactly. So focus is absolutely essential, as is preparation as well. So you need to prepare your mind for the task ahead. You need to prepare your space. You need to prepare your body. We talk about all these things all the time. Preparation of any project is absolutely critical, isn't it? And so we need to make sure that we thought about what we're doing and we don't just randomly sort of jump into it. And so, yeah, it's really important. And, you know, that focus, I think is where, you know, when we're working with clients all the time, that's what we do. We don't move away from the task that we're doing. So if we find things that belong in other rooms, we put them in a box, we take them at the end of the session. Yeah. And there we'll go and sit there. So we're not just, Oh, that belongs in there. Even with our clients, we don't even, it's not that we don't let them out of the room, <laughs> but we, we don't suddenly send them off and a client and say that belongs in your son's bedroom, go and take that there because the client will then become distracted. So it's very much retaining that focus on the task in hand because we, we know what happens. You start on one task, there, there's a pen, let me go and put it in the kitchen where it belongs. And then you go to the kitchen, you open the kitchen drawer and you're like, Oh, this needs decluttering now. So the next thing you're working on the kitchen drawer, and then you forget about what you were doing before. So it's really, really important to retain that focus. And the reason is so that you can get the job done, as Ingrid very rightly said, so you can get to the end of it, give yourself a green tick and be motivated onto the next one. You have to fulfill and complete that cycle of going around, getting started, getting finished, thinking about storage, organizing things, looking at what you've decluttered, enjoying what you've created and sitting back and thinking, giving yourself a pat on the back, right, I'm ready to go again. And that neck, I'm ready to go again, might be next day, it might be next week, it might be next month. But you feel motivated because you see that is that sense of achievement, isn't it? Yes, absolutely, Leslie. And I think we have a right to be proud of ourselves if we do something good. You know, we get told all the time in everywhere, you know, we should be slimmer and prettier and thinner and tidier. And let's just do the positive and go, you know what? It might be the tiniest drawer, but I did it. How awesome is this? And that is such a great motivator then to go, what shall I do next? Oh, let me now look at my socks <laughs> you know, or something else in your house. But finish that job. Definitely pat yourself on the back. Maybe you have something in mind that if you do five successful little decluttering projects, you can do something that you've been wanting to do. Or uh, maybe you want to give yourself a reward for decluttering a room, make it a positive experience. Do you know what the interesting thing you say about that, about rewarding yourself and stuff? And of course, that's something that a lot of people do. But what I find is that the the joy of retail therapy and bringing something into the house that a lot of our clients or people that we work with have got beforehand is surpassed by the joy that they get by taking stuff out at the house at the end and so it kind of goes through a complete shift doesn't it so people are like oh I love buying things and it's really really lovely to buy all these things and all of a sudden they're like 
I love the feeling of donating things to a charity shop, giving things to, an, to a primary school, whatever that looks like gives them a much nicer feeling than actually buying stuff. And so then got the shopping bit of it thrown in as well. It stops you from shopping as well, or it makes you be a little bit more intentional with the kind of things that you buy in. And so sometimes a lot of people are so happy with the way that the house looks now. They don't need to even reward themselves because the reward is there in terms of how it makes you feel mm -hmm. and how it makes your home tick. Mm -hmm. But I think also what a re with a reward, I definitely don't mean stuff, but it could be that you've been meaning to get your, your hair cut for ages, but because you haven't shopped several things that you were planning to buy, maybe you can now treat yourself to a lovely hairdressing appointment, or you can have your nails done, or you want to have a massage you've been meaning for ages to do. So those can also be fantastic. It doesn't have to be stuff. That for sure, for sure. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So I think we've, we've talked quite a lot about the kind of things that are going to set you up almost for success in 2020, haven't mm -hmm. we? Really critical. We're right there with you. We absolutely want this decade, this year to be, let's not hope it takes 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a bit depressing, wouldn't it? Uh, are we still going to be here in 10 years, Ingrid? Bearing in mind that I've already done seven decades or whatever. <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, so we're here for success in 2020. So what sort of things do you need to set yourself up for success? Well, I think you need lots of Leslie and Ingrid in your life. I think that's what you need. <laughs> we love motivating oh, really? people, don't we? Yes, we love motivating people. Yeah, no, you're right. And we do think that. It's, it's kind of weird, isn't it, to say that. But we do think that. We think that we help, don't we? I yeah, think. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we hope that we help you know so it's just trying to listen to the podcast you know so many people are putting the podcasts on while they're decluttering you know we've, we've pretty much covered everything in the house now I think so if you if you're sitting there and you're looking at stationery or if you're looking at your garage or your loft or your bedroom or your medication or whatever that might be somewhere within our resources there's going to be something that can help and the podcast is definitely going to spur you on so really really think about that yeah, absolutely. I mean, 66 podcasts and counting to, to choose from with us in your ear. And we had a lovely review, didn't we, Leslie, about somebody who said, I've listened to all your podcasts and now I have to wait every Friday until the next one comes in. What do I do without my BFFs in my ear every day? <laughs> I know, exactly, exactly. I know, and they're so nice. Oh, we love that, don't we? I mean, we love doing them. Honestly, I think we would still do them if we thought that no one was listening, yeah. would we? <laughs> just so that we can wear like New Year hats and Christmas hats and just get generally get excited. Um, anyway, <laughs> so yeah, listen to the podcast. We've got loads of resources on there. So if you're a paper person, you know, print off some of our checklists to help you. There's resources, there's guides, there's things like that on there as well sign up for our challenges of course there will be more challenges in 2020 in fact we have a challenge starting on monday i know i know we're so i'm so excited i love doing it. the challenges have just been so fab last year and we just absolutely love doing them we did the wardrobe decluttering challenge we did the random acts of decluttering which was a fantastic success so many people who got on board in our challenge and just started sharing photos so we can't i can't wait to do another challenge i love them especially also because i can do facebook lives leslie and i love doing facebook lives as you know <laughs> i know don't forget we did the 40 days 40 items challenge as well back in February, March last year. Oh and we God. also, I know, you're forgetting about these things. And then we also did the May wardrobe challenge as well. Remember? Yeah. So we've done, I think we did four or five challenges last year. All of them went down great. And all of them saw lots of things going out of people's houses. And the biggest thing is there was lots of light bulb moments from people like, oh, this is not too hard, actually. When I'm inspired and motivated by somebody, when I've got a community of like-minded people around me, those are the kind of things that are going to keep me on task. And that's the important thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I know. I can't believe it. You know, we're starting on Monday again. It's so great. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Absolutely. So if you, if you haven't signed up for our challenge yet, make sure you do that before Monday. I mean, you can join in later, but you want to be there from the start, right? And you're all motivated because it's a new decade and a new year. So what better way to start on the 6th of January when everybody's back to work and back to school and to go, I'm going to do a challenge. I'm going to hang out with Leslie Ingrid for the week and I want to get some of this stuff out of this house. 
Yes, sign up. We want to see you there. Yeah. And of course, Leslie, if anybody's listening and thinking, you know what, a challenge sounds fabulous, but I really, really need some more help with my house. I really want to tackle far more areas than five areas. Why not have a look at the membership? Check out members.declutterhub.com for all the information about our membership because we got so much lovely information and so much more to give than the, than the random challenge alone. So definitely have a look there. So Leslie, what can people find in the membership? Well, we've got step-by-step courses. So what we do, what we typically do really in the membership with our step-by-step courses is we go through every single component, don't we? So we talk about the emotions that stop us from decluttering things. You know, all those things that you're like, oh yeah, of course that's me. So we really drill down into the emotional connection that you've got with your stuff and try and think that through. So Ingrid and I are lucky when we're working one-to-one with people that we can really focus in on people's emotions, but we try and cover all those emotions within the courses. And that's really, really critical. We talk about decluttering. We talk about the simple questions, you know, do you need it? Do you use it? You know, that's simple. You can do that on your own, but then there are much, much deeper questions. And we, so we go much deeper in terms of the decluttering questions that we ask. We talk about categorizing, we talk about organ, um, organizing things. We suggest storage solutions and we talk about places to donate things. So those step-by-step courses can be done when you want and so it's not done in a kind of challenge time scale scenario so you just do those whenever you feel ready you can take it one lesson at a time you can break it down into manageable chunks there's look people are having massive amounts of successes we've got bedroom courses in there you've got medication we've got bathroom we've got all different courses in there that you can that you can go through step by step in terms of what you get from Ingrid and I Every two weeks, we do a Q&A session live. So we live stream with the two of us on camera. People submit their questions in advance and we get an opportunity, don't we, to really, again, really drill down and focus on people's individual problems. So this is not generic stuff. This is very detailed stuff that we go into. We try and help you. And we have a community as well within there where all the members talk to each other about the things that they're going through. And we chip in all the time with our thoughts as well. And it's actually super, super cheap. It's literally like, I don't know, it works out like £10 a month. You know, really, it's like a couple of cups of coffee to get your life back on track, isn't it? So check that out. If you really, really want to go for it in 2020, the members area is definitely, definitely going to help you. Absolutely. And, you know, and you, you've just mentioned a few things, but in the membership, we've got the quick wins as well. We've got extra resources, more, even more resources in the member site. So much good stuff, all for you. With our input, uh, we really want your success in 2020. That's our aim, that you can enjoy your house with less stuff and more freedom in your head. (laughs) Definitely, definitely. So have you got any New Year's resolutions? Have I got any New Year's resolutions? Interestingly enough, I really don't make New Year's resolutions, but I always make the resolution to have a really good time. (laughs) And go on holiday. How is that different to 2019? Yeah, because I think, well, I think maybe because I consciously think to myself, I know this sounds a bit morbid, but I'm always like, you know what? I only live once. I really want to make sure I have a really good time. I spend it with people that I love and that I like. And if people are negative, I'm sorry, I don't have time for you in my life (laughs) because I've got so much to positivity to share and things that I want to do and I want to help others and yeah so I've really I've made the conscious that sounds a bit crazy but I make the conscious decision to have another really good year and to go on some holidays that I really wanted to so I, I try not to spend a lot of money on stuff but I really really want to enjoy also my holidays and it doesn't even mean I have to go far I mean we go camping in France every year and we love it so and I don't even like camping so there you go but my whole family loves it the kids love it So yeah, so that's my thing that I think, how can I make sure that I, again, in in the new year that's coming up, have a great time? How about you, Leslie? I think I'm going to steal that one. I think that's such a nice one. Mm. You know, it's just such a positive message, isn't it? You know what I mean? So yeah, and, and I think it kind of links into what I was thinking, which is all about balance, really. So 2019 was a kind of a busy year for you and I, wasn't it? So I'm not going to lie, our balance went skew a few times, didn't it? (laughs) in terms of the kind of work-life balance. We really need to focus on giving you guys what you need, giving our clients what they need in our own individual businesses, 
but also spending time with family and friends. And that did go a little bit off kilter at times in the year. So we know, so it's not that, you know, so we don't have a problem with clutter, but we still have a problem with a lack of time and where we're focusing our energy in the wrong areas and things like that. And so what I like about New Year and September the same is it gives you an opportunity to have a quick reset and, re- and, and think again, doesn't it? So for some people that'll be during a holiday or whatever. But for me, you know, that January 1st is definitely like, right, okay, what went well in 2019 and what can I do better in 2020 and how do I need to make that happen? So yeah, really, really focusing on balance, I think is the, is the one for me in 2020. Well, you know, the thing is though, Leslie, although we work together a lot, I had a really good time with spending time with you. So, <laughs> so for me, although we did work like crazy, but it was so much fun though, and I wouldn't have changed it for the world. So that I think I really enjoyed it. So I, then when I look back, I think, you know what, we, I might have worked a lot, but it was time, I think, really well spent. And I just love chatting into this microphone every week to our lovely listeners and just to, to read the review. So please write a review if you enjoy this podcast. We just love chatting to you do share the love with us. So share a view with us. If you think, you know what? I love listening to these ladies in their funny accents, chats about all this funny stuff and decluttering and mindfulness and, and doing all of that. We just love hanging out with you. We really, really do. I think for me, it's never, you know, I could say, Oh, I, I maybe want to do a dry January or I want to lose weight or, and I'm thinking, you know what? I just want to have a good time. Life's too short. <laughs> I think that's the thing, you know, so far we're kind of, you know, a couple of years into the declutter hub business, nearly 18 months so uh, or so. And I think it's really important that we still enjoy it because as soon as we stop enjoying it, then that's going to come across to the listeners, isn't it? But we honestly, we are really, I know we do, you know, we talk about the members area and I know that's something that you need to pay for, but we're fully invested in you and Mick because we know that we can't, with a little bit of investment from your part, we know that we can make a massive difference, don't we, Ingrid? And that's why we're like, please come and join us. We want you to join us so we can make a difference. So anyway, I think we need to wrap up now before yeah. we start getting all effervescent about our lovely listeners again. I uh, Oh, that. Ever, ever, effervescent? I can't even say, Can that. say what, that. What does that mean? I know it's so funny. You know what we talk talking again about all the reviews that we get. I can guarantee in every review that we ever get, the accents come out. <laughs> oh my god, they've got such lovely accents. I'm like, no, we really don't. <laughs> but I'm just glad that you can understand us. <laughs> so that's the, that's a benefit, isn't it? A bonus. <laughs> but I still don't know what effervescent means. <laughs> Fizzing over with excitement. So effervescent is, you know, when you have like um, a glass of water and you put one of those fizzing tablets into it. So that's effervescent. Oh, oh, I love that. That's me. I, I, I get really excited about things. <laughs> okay, so effervescent. Okay, thank you, Leslie. A new word in my vocabulary, which is, that's really helpful. The first so, new word of 2020. And um, 2020 is definitely going to be the year that you start to say iron in the correct way. That's okay, my- can you just please then stop saying rubbers instead of erasers? <laughs> <laughs> right. Listeners, lovely, lovely listeners, thank you so much. That's it for this first episode of 2020. Oh my goodness. We hope you've all enjoyed listening and are inspired to take action because action is what it's all about. Check us out on members.declotrock.com. Check out the challenge that's coming up on Monday. And we just appreciate you for listening. And thank you so much for being here. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, like I said, do leave a review and tell us what you think about the show. If you'd like to get more tips and advice, please follow us on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as at the Clutter Hub. And we have a lovely, supportive Facebook group where we chat all things clutter. You can search for the Declutter Hub community. We'd love to see you there. If you don't want to miss the next weekly episode, subscribe to the Declutter Hub podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, and it will pop into your notifications each Friday. Happy New Year, and see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Declutter Hub podcast. Check out declutterhub.com for more inspiration, and don't forget to tune in next week.